A few years ago, I made a library called Make Test Docs. And if I were to uh, scroll down here and just look at the downloads chart, you're going to see very much a upward trend recently. And if I'm able to believe the numbers that ClickBuy gives me, we are getting close to half a million downloads. And that's why I'm making a quick video about it. I want to explain why I think this uplift is happening. And it's also a cool library that is pretty useful. So I want to explain what it does. The package itself is pretty minimal. So all the docs are just here on the readme. And the main thing that it's really here for is to test your documentation. Let's say you have a bit of markdown that looks like this, then there is a Python code cell over here. And there's another one down below over here as well. And if this is your documentation, boy, would it stink if your docs are wrong and if this code actually produces an error. So what I wanted to have is some quick utility that lets me take all of these Python code blocks and run them as unit tests, part of my normal PyTest CI run. And that's where make test docs uh, came from. To use it, you can um, use something like this. You would use a utility from the make test docs library, like check this one markdown file. And what you would then be able to do is point to some sort of a docs folder. You could glob all these different markdown files. And then every single file is going to be passed to this check markdown file function. And if it is able to run all the code in that one file, then it's going to pass. And if it fails, if there's some sort of bug, then the PyTest will fail and you have your signal that it needs something is up and that you got to go and fix it. This is the simplest use case, but you can go a bit deeper with this because in the default setting, I am assuming that all of these code blocks are independent of each other and that each and every single one of these code blocks needs to be able to run on their own. However, there are moments when you don't want that, when the document is a bit more of a story. And in that case, there's a flag that you can set. And that is that you can specify that when you're checking the markdown file, you also want to have memory. So every single markdown file is going to keep remembering what the variables were defined. And that way you can still check if the entire file works, even if the cells are not independent of each other. Then at some point I started wondering, well, we can check this for Python, but we might also be able to check this for other languages. So one thing you could do is maybe check for bash. And the nice thing about Markdown is you can just kind of decorate the code cell and tell it what language it is in. And that is information that I can use on my side to maybe check the file in a different way. So when I see bash, for example, then I'm going to run this via the sub process module and I'm just going to go ahead and see if there's an error. If there isn't, great. But the next question, of course, is like, what if you had a different language you wanted to put here? Maybe you want to show some JSON and you want to confirm that the JSON is actually correct or at least parsable. Well, then there's also this additional language support feature. If you have something like JSON or something that isn't registered on my side as something I support by default, I think I do Python and Bash by default. But let's say you have some JSON you want to test as well. Well, what you're also able to do is you're able to register a executor. So you're able to say something like, hey, every time you see a JSON code block, then this is how I want you to test it. And that way, you can do more than just test Python. You can also have some config files in here. You might be able to do something with Pydanic, I guess. That might also be a nice thing to do here where you check that the config is actually correct. And again, the whole point is that whenever you're on a site that has documentation, you want your users to be able to just and again, the reason why you do all this is because you want to have examples on your docs that actually work. I've always hated it when I click this copy button and then the code didn't work. That's the most frustrating experience ever. So that's the thing that I wanted to prevent. But then I was also able to take it a step further because I like to use uh, make docs material for a lot of my documentation pages. They are rebranding to Zensical, I think now, but that's neither here or there. Uh, the main thing with that package is that you also want to have markdown in your doc strings uh, because they can render quite nicely on make docs. So for that, what I'm also able to do is I'm able to have a look at this list of functions that you give me. So let's say there are two functions over here, roar and super roar. And let's say that both of these two functions have doc strings. And in that doc string, there might be a Python block that serves as an example. Well, in that case, uh, you can use the check doc string function. It works in a very similar way. It just doesn't check a file under the hood. It just checks uh, the doc string itself. But that is something you can go ahead and use here. There's also another utility. Sometimes you don't have functions, but you have this one class that has lots of methods that you want to check. And in order to get all those methods out, you have this function get code block members. There's some settings such that you can retrieve the properties that you're interested in or all the methods that you're interested in. Uh, but then you're also able to just pass along this one class, if it were, and then you're able to check the doc string for all of these items. And I kind of want to show this one project that I have that uses this. Uh, this is the project. It's called Lazy Lines. It is basically a data frame library that uses generators under the hood. The reason I built it is because sometimes I also like to make web requests for different rows and pandas and polars don't really make that super nice. But uh, the thing that's kind of neat, if I were just to, I don't know, have a look at this code example here, uh, you can see that there's this example that's being shown. And if I look at the source code, then you can see that indeed there is a little bit of Python here. And this is the example that shows up on the docs. I can move here with my cursor and copy it. 
But that's the thing that I'm also actively uh, unit testing. So let's actually do that just for fun. So this is the lazy lines repository. There is a tests folder here. I think I call it test docs, right? Yeah, so there you go. There is this one big object. I'm using this get code block members function over here to get every single documentation code block from every single method from that object. Uh, also notice, by the way, that for the PyTest ID, I'm using the qualitative name dunder method, which is great. That way you get a nice string representation when you run the tests. But yeah, this is PyTest. The only thing I need to do to run everything is just to have this maybe four line implementation over here. And if I were now to do something like UV run PyTest and then point to tests, test docs, dot pi and let's maybe also uh, make that verbose because that way you can actually see it uh, then you can see that you know i'm actively checking all of these different methods and what am i checking is just the base example that is in the docs which is something you want to test anyway but the pattern that's really nice here is that by documenting you also need less unit tests yourself and you also have a nice separation of concerns where the test docs is really there kind of as a very basic utility test and then all the other tests that you write can go for something that's more specific or a little bit more of an edge case or something more bespoke I, uh, suppose you could say. And now if we go back to this chart, why is this going up so much? Well, it turns out that some people over at Hugging Face have a need for this. They do a lot of stuff with Markdown and they still want to have that stuff tested. And this little library turned out to be great. And you can actually see when they uh, were actively exploring this library and when they started introducing it to some packages. Uh, but as of recently, you can definitely see there's a nice upward trend over here as well, which is super cool. It's always fun to uh, accidentally make a package in like 2020 and then see that in 2025, it can suddenly get like a massive boost in download numbers. But uh, the main thing that I wanted to mention here is that if you are keen to, uh, you know, test your documentation and you have a lot of markdown, then make test docs is a nice library that you might want to go ahead and use. It is getting close to half a million downloads now, so pretty basic, but I can also argue it's uh, kind of battle tested as well. So feel free to use it and I hope you will.